Franken Tune Franken Tune Studio Hello and welcome. This is Enrique from Prankentune Studio. Today I will show you how to use GarageBress for Affinity Designer. GarageBress is the replacement for a former propaganda design kit. So if you got propaganda in the past, this is your lucky day, as it is a free update. In Affinity Designer, open the Styles panel and select Import Styles. Next, select an AF style file from the list and open it. Repeat this process until you've imported all styles included with the pack. GarashePress also includes a bunch of bonus vector shapes and masks. We'll get to them later. To use GarashePress, select a vector shape and apply a style from a list. As the style previews are barely recognizable from the styles panel, I recommend you keep the Garage Press Styles Guide at hand, so you'll get a better visual reference when working with these presets. By pressing G on your keyboard or selecting the gradient tool, you can scale, move, and rotate your textures. In addition, Garage Press Styles add a color overlay effect automatically. To change this color, navigate to the Layers panel and click the Effects icon. Garage Press Fills features some nice and tweakable rough edges. You can modify these borders using Affinity's Stroke Panel. You may want to adjust the strokes width proportionally to your shape's dimensions. So, basically, this is the core mechanic for using Garage Press. Select a shape, choose a style, adjust its position and change its color. This pack aims to give your vector shapes a lovely hand-printed look swiftly and practically. Garage Press will help you add some grungy personality to flat vector artworks. You can use the Paste Style feature to speed up your process. Copy the style you want to use with Ctrl C or Command C. Select your target shape and from the Edit menu choose Paste the Style. Garage Press styles can only be applied to curves. If you use them on groups or layers, you won't be able to see any textures. We've included some tools to sort this issue out. I'll show you how in a few minutes. By using the copy and paste style feature and saving tons of time reusing styles I already applied. Sometimes they'll work just like that, sometimes you must adjust your texture's position. As you can see, finishing your artwork using Garage Press is extremely simple. Just follow the same steps we've seen so far. Select a shape, choose a style, adjust its position and choose a color. Rinse and repeat. While selecting your styles fill, go to the top menu and look for a small lock icon. Activate it to maintain your texture's aspect ratio. Deactivate it to scale it freely. In this case, I want to add a shading layer to this creature's face, so I go to the top menu and duplicate this shape. Then, you need to navigate to the Effects panel, and at the bottom, you'll find the Styles menu. Choose a style from a list and tap the Gradient tool to adjust its position, rotation, and dimensions. To change your style's colors, go back to the Effects menu and choose the Color Overlay option. In this case, I want to keep the original black color, so I'll leave it as it is. Sometimes I move around the duplicated shape to emphasize the hand printed effect. It's all up to you. Shading is also quite simple. Just repeat the same steps we have already seen. Duplicate your main shape, select another style from the styles panel, adjust the texture by selecting the gradient tool and change your texture's color if needed. 
as these are seamless textures. You can rotate and scale them any way you want. You'll get different results just by tweaking these settings. The secret to creating intricate looks out of simple shapes is layering. You can duplicate your base path as many times as needed and apply different textures to these duplicates. There are no rules when choosing styles. Just have fun testing them. You can never go wrong. Garage Press includes a bonus vector pack called Garage Element. This kit contains little print errors, stains and spatters. These are drag and drop assets. We created these assets to give you some imperfections to add to your final artwork. I love how you can get a super distressed and unique finish just by randomly throwing in a bunch of these shapes. The key is to keep them subtle. Just a tiny leak here, an accidental smear there, and you can call it a day. Try blending this element with the rest of your artwork to avoid making your final piece look overdone. Just adding the right amount of elements will make a huge difference. Last, we'll take a quick look at Garage Press Masks. This assets library aims to provide a solution for adding Garage Press textures to groups and entire layers. In this example, we have this layer name Arm. If we apply a style to this layer, we won't be able to see any texture, just a black blob. We'll rely on Garage Masks to add a texture to the entire layer. Insert a mask from the Assets library. Adjust its size. And from the Layers panel, drag this mask thumbnail beside your Layers thumbnail to apply it as mask. Of course, you can move and resize this mask around as well. If you are familiar with our Propaganda Design Kit for Affinity Designer, this substitute, Garage Press, will enhance your experience. With the same simple usability and more textures to add to your arsenal, Garage Press will become your go tool to add quick textures to your vector shapes in Affinity Designer. Check Garage Press info and purchase link in the description box. See you next time. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two.